Okay, y'all, so Bobby the Beast Boy has it bad out here for Paris. I might owe Brother Minister a little bit of an apology. And, well, let's just say I have a newfound respect for Ruby, so I guess she's part of the fam now. What's up, y'all? What is up? It's your girl, EJ, back with another review and recap of The Family Business. This is episode seven in plain sight. Now, this episode is going to open up with Bobby the Beast Boy asking Paris to go out. And of course, in true traditional Paris, our girl is going to kind of just, you know, kind of shoo him away a little bit, keep him on his toes. You know what I mean? So anyway, y'all, Curtis has called her out because he has an update on the situation. Turns out they were looking for Uncle Willie, but Uncle Willie has been gone for the last two years he actually passed away from COVID so it can be him that's helping out Niles now while they are actually at the grave somebody is gonna pop up they're gonna pop up in that black vehicle and they're gonna start spraying them bullets but you could tell that they weren't really trying to unalive them because they missed and if it was Niles we know that he wouldn't have missed Niles is a trained marksman he would never have missed from that range and Paris actually tells Curtis that and she also tells him that that she's going to go and try to get some help because she needs someone who is going to think like Niles because at this point she has got to find him because he doing too much. So meanwhile, y'all, LC and KD Shrugs are going to meet up. And y'all know LC cannot stand to be seen with KD. But KD is adamant about having this meeting. And he wants to know what's been going on. What is LC out here doing? Because he knows that LC has been out here unaliving these people from the Dixie Mafia. And he doesn't want to have any blowback from it. Pretty much, he joined this whole alliance or the table, not the alliance, because, you know, that's some other jokers. But he joined this whole table in order to be able to elevate himself so that he would be able to retire and this is not what is going to go down if LC keeps moving this way now he's going to talk about catfish and how his uh, boss is the cousin the senator so we're talking about some high-powered government people that LC is out here messing with so this is interesting already but to know that LC is going after some of the top people in order to protect his son y'all this is definitely about to get even more interesting Interesting. At this point, it's so bad that Katie even tells him, he like, look, I don't scare easily, but even I'm getting scared and I can't keep covering this up for you. At this point, KD is like, look, I'm gonna need an insurance plan instead of an AARP card. <laughs> so Ruby is gonna end up calling Antonio, y'all. And this is when Ruby and I become friends, y'all. When she tell Antonio exactly what happened, when she tell him like, look, I was the one who unalived villain Vinny because he was controlling. And if I didn't get him, he was gonna get me me and I feel like she did this because she felt like if she took the heat off of Orlando then they could be safe and that Vinny not Vinny that Antonio would come after her so those are just my thoughts on why she did it but who knows but anyway y'all when she said catch me if you can right at the end I said girl you is my you my girl so meanwhile the alliance is hanging out Antonio wants to handle Ruby himself so Donna got to take out somebody else y'all now Orlando brings little man home he is so freaking adorable y'all KD is gonna go to Vegas and tell him that LC is picking off the Dixie Mafia one by one so basically KD out here snitching on oh, KD's also gonna tell him that the Dixie Mafia is run by the sit-in senator and KD tells Vegas to go and talk to the senator I'm like why you tell him to go and talk to the senator so meanwhile LC is going to go and visit Christopher with his old cute self now LC's gonna tell him that he needs his help and he's gonna tell him that in return that he can help him out with his friends we also learned that Christopher and LC have mutual friends and that's the reason why Christopher took the meeting now we are going to see that C-Note and Rob are going to snitch LC out to Vegas <laughs> and Vegas is going to get Orlando to take a ride with him and then we're also going to see that Brother Minister is going to try to warn LC and Donna old trifling nosy self is going to overhear it and she's of course going to go and tell it you I already know how this is gonna go because when brother minister was sitting in that car between those two I was like this does not look good the fact that he is squished in between them two just looking like a piece of meat between two pieces of bread I said mm -mm. okay brother minister how you finna get out of this one 
And I also said to myself, you know, EJ, you was kind of hard on Brother Minister last week. I mean, you was going in pretty, pretty bad. So you really do owe him an apology because he did come through. He actually did have a change of heart. He did have a change of mind. And he tells his dude to go and warn LC. Now, whether the dude make it to go and warn him, who knows? I hope he does because I really need this alliance to go ahead and fall on his face for real, for real. But meanwhile, Nevada is going to tell Rio about Brandon. So we know where this is going to lead to. And y'all, let me find out Rio about to go show up at this funeral because you know he is. You know that is exactly where he going to go. And you know how this is all about to go down. But anyway, y'all, Vegas and Orlando, they head on out to see if they can find out what LC is up to. But, you know, they got to drive seven hours. Meanwhile, while they're going there, LC has made it back home and he got a little pep in his step y'all like LC got a little bounce in his step I was like oh shoot we already know what he did I mean he rolling up them stairs he calling Chippy now Chippy is outside trying to hang with the great kids they out here having a little play battle fight they got all the props and stuff looking like little soldiers or little whatever you call them y'all know what I'm talking about don't hold me on that one anyway he gonna call her, tell her to come back upstairs or whatnot. She looking frustrated like, I am busy, Elsie. So she get up there and then he in there sitting in that bathtub drinking that champagne. And then he like, listen, you know, uh, let's soak off the day together. And so, you know, Chippy was down with it. That's what I love about Chippy. Chippy didn't even have to think about it twice. She was ready to go. She done jumped this out of that tub with her clothes on. I loved it, y'all. This was like one of the best parts of this entire episode. This is one of my favorite parts, as a matter of fact. So anyway, uh, Brother Elijah is going to be running some dealers off of the corner. And then Paris is going to show up and she wants to talk to him about uh, Niles Monroe. And he said that he hasn't heard that name in a couple of months. And that the last time he heard, Senior Cruz was looking for him to unalive the man that unalived his son. So Roman is out here looking for some help because Roman is like, look, I need some help, Darnell. He goes to Bobby the Beast Boy's house looking for him. But, you know, Darnell is indisposed at the time. And he ends up calling Roman and telling him, like, how did y'all even mess that up? Like, y'all were supposed to take him out there's no way that he was supposed to still be alive and then of course Roman is like yeah uh, Brandon was supposed to do that but of course he didn't I mean Brandon is in complete agreement he knows that they completely messed up he knows that this whole situation was a big hot mess but Darnell is just gonna straight up tell him like look I can't help you uh, and I can't bring that type of heat to Bobby's uh, home so it is what it is at this point Roman is gonna be on his own so anyway y'all uh, Antonio is gonna end up finding Vinny his body and Junior's gonna comfort him I'm like boy bye you doing too much so meanwhile Vegas and Orlando are gonna make it to their destination after getting a little assist from Curtis and look they get up in there and see that this guy has been unalive they're, they're literally standing over the bodies with their guns out when policemen walk up in there y'all and these two get arrested so I don't even know what's gonna happen with them they are over seven hours away from their home there is no explanation as to why they are even here and how they're going to get out of this situation. Is KD even going to be able to help them out of this one? Like, he the one who really put them in this situation by going to talk to Vegas and telling them this because Vegas wouldn't have never even come there if he didn't tell him the information. So I feel like he needs to do something to get them out of the situation. But turns out that the body that is unalive is the dude Catfish, the one that we were talking about earlier. He's the mayor down there. He He's one of the bosses, you know, his boss is the senator. So, yeah, this is getting crazy, y'all. So, anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think about this episode. Let me know what y'all think about this whole situation with LC and taking out the Dixon Mafia. How do y'all think Vegas and Orlando are going to get out of their situation? And were y'all impressed with Ruby? And what do y'all think is going to happen with this whole situation with Brother Minister? Is he going to make it, y'all? Is Brother Minister going to be unalived? Or will he live to see another day? Go ahead and get the conversation started down below. Meanwhile, guys, if you like the video, make sure to go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to your girl channel. Turn on your notifications so that you do not miss out on any of my future The Family Business content. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace.